Hi, this is Alexander Kolovos with Teradata Product Engineering. Welcome to this edition of the Teradata Tech Bytes. You're watching part 4B in the series of Using Python with Teradata Vantage. In this series, the key takeaway is to illustrate operating with Python on the Vantage platform from your client with the Teradata package for Python Teradata ML. In part 4, we overall examine how to perform in database scripting with a script table operator database object. This will include direct calls to the script table operator via the Teradata ML Python wrapper functions, as well as background script table operator tasks when you use the Teradata ML map functions mapro and mappartition. We have split part 4 in two videos to demonstrate each approach separately. This is the second of the two videos. In each Part 4 demo, we build on the use case and material that were presented in the preceding Part 2 of this series. For an overview of the underlying use case and the use case tasks completed to this point, we recommend that you first view the Part 2 video. We now proceed with the demonstration in this Part 4 of the Using Python with Third Data Vantage TechBytes series. In the present video, we will be using this Jupyter Notebook to demonstrate the following features. We will show how to scale in database tasks of training and scoring with multiple models when using partition data. We will also illustrate how to use the TerdataML data frame map functions, namely how to use the map row method for row-based operations and the map partition method for partition-based operations. All tasks in the present demonstration have the common characteristic of using the script table operator object in the database, which is invoked to run Python scripts that you wish to execute natively in the database nodes. To perform in-node script execution, you need to coordinate first with your database administrator and ensure that first, the script table operator database object is activated in the target advanced SQL engine. Second, the Teradata in nodes Python interpreter and add on packages are installed in the target server. And finally, that your database user account has the necessary script table operator permissions enabled by the database administrator. So let us get started here with the initial steps that include first loading the libraries that we're going to be using and then creating a Vantage connection to the target advanced SQL engine. And we are now ready to enter the micromodeling segment demo. This demo is a variation of the scoring use case that was presented in the Part 4a video. Let us take a minute to explain the difference in these two use cases. In both examples, the goal is to predict the propensity of a financial institution customer base to open new credit card accounts. In the video 4a example, we trained a single model outside the database and used a Python scoring script to apply the model across the entire customer base of the financial institution. Instead, in the present example, we partitioned the financial institution customers by state code. For each customer partition, we wish to train a different model and then score with it the corresponding state code test data. We will be using the Vantage architecture to scale our operations by simultaneously running the different training tasks in the advanced SQL engine in parallel. Then we will follow up by doing the same for the different scoring tasks. For these operations, we have a Python model training script and a Python scoring script. In these scripts, we utilize the scikit-learn add-on library to train and score with random forest classification, which is available in the inodes Python distribution. Our plan is to push these Python scripts into the target advanced SQL engine and use them through the script table operator. So we first begin with some convenient specifications, namely, as you see here, first we activate the Teradata ML flag that enables displaying of the submitted SQL queries to the connected database. We uh, parameterize the file system location where our project files are located. And finally, we specify for the script table operator, the database search path for user installed files, such as scripts and associated files. Uh, we run uh, the latter uh, SQL statement with the help of the execute function of the Teradata ML connection context. So we start with the model training step and we begin by creating a Teradata ML data frame from the training dataset table. 
In the next block, we build a teradataml script object, the STOTR, as you see here, for the training step. We will be using the training data TD train ADS teradataml data frame. And we also see that our Python uh, training script name is strffitmm.py. We also partition the data, as you see here, uh, by the state code variable. So for each state in the data, we expect to receive back a model as a character large object type variable. Let us execute this block. The following step is to upload the training Python script file to the database. We use the install file method of the teradataml script object to push the script to the connect advantage system. If there should already be an earlier version of the script in the database that we wish to replace, then we first remove the older script version with the remove file method of the teradataml script object, as we assume we do in this demo. We have confirmation that the tasks have been completed, and eventually we execute the training script by calling the execute script method of the teradataml script object, in this case, STOTR. In the end of this operation, we have saved the outcome into the train out object teradataml data frame. Let us bring this object locally to our client and save the contents into a file. In this block, we convert the train out object into a pandas data frame, as you see here. And uh, then after we take a peek into the multiple models pandas data frame, we will actually export it to a, a CSV file on our client. And we have our results here. Time to execute the next block and save these models now locally in a CSV file. At this point, let us make a brief note that we could have followed a different uh, workflow so that we could keep the models in the database instead of transferring them to the client. This workflow is actually examined in the TerdataML documentation at the address docs.teradata.com. We now proceed with a scoring step in our analysis. Let us begin this step by creating a TerdataML data frame from the test dataset table. Let's execute this block. Next, similarly as with a training step, we proceed to define a TerdataML script object, STOSC, as you see here, for the scoring step. We will be using the testing data teradataml data frame as input, TD test ADS. Our Python training script name is strf score mm.py. And we again partition by uh, the state code variable. In the next code block, we upload the models file and the scoring script to the database. Again, we illustrate the case where existing versions of these files have been uh, assumedly already uploaded to the database and we replace them by sequentially executing the remove file and install file methods of the teradataml script object, in this case STOSC. If these files do not exist in the database, then remember to comment out the remove file statements in the beginning so as to avoid an error response. We get confirmation that the tasks have been completed. And finally, we execute the script in database with the execute script method of the teradataml script object. Let us proceed with the execution and wait for the results. The results are here. And we have requested to display the scoring results for a given customer by printing the probability prob0 that a new credit card account will not be opened by the customer the probability prob1 that it will, and the actual response from the test data information. So these operations complete the demonstration of interacting explicitly with a script table operator via the teradataml Python wrapper functions. For the remainder of this presentation, we will make a brief introduction to the teradataml map functions that also happen to utilize the script table operator in their background. The map functions are two teradataml data frame methods. Namely, there is map row that can perform row-based operations, and there is map partition for partition-based operations. Please note that to use the teradataml map functions, we have to have installed the Python dil add-on library 
on both the client and the target advanced SQL engine. And this installation must be of the same version. In the following, we present one example of each of the Teradata ML map functions. For the examples, we consider a use case of student data in an academic institution. So we have here the dataset admissions train for this use case, which actually comes built in with the Teradata ML package. And in this code block, we loaded and created a Teradata ML data frame DF map for our demonstration. We define a function increased GPA that takes a single row as input. The row is expected to contain a GPA column and increases the GPA value by a specified percentage that by default is 20% as we see here. We therefore wish to apply this function to each row in the DFMAP to our data ML data frame. This operation is as simple as invoking the map row method of the Teradata ML data frame DF map. Observe that we use a lambda notation to pass the desired increase percentage as an argument here. One can alternatively use a partial notation or only pass the user defined function as a single argument to map row. Let us execute this block. And the results of the statement of this block illustrate the effect of map row in this example. In a second example, we define a group GPA AVG function. This time, the function accepts a group of rows as input. Again, the rows are expected to contain a GPA column, and the function eventually computes the average GPA of the input rows. In this scenario, where you may want to operate on data partitions like that, call the define function as an argument of the map partition method of the Teradata ML data frame. Observe now that map partition expects the input data partition column to be specified as an argument. Also, you see that map partition has a returns argument. This is optional only if the map partition output columns are the same in number, names, and type as the input Teradata ML data frame columns. This is not the case in our example, hence we need to specify the output variables explicitly in the returns argument. Let us execute this block of statements as well. The result shows the requested operation that has been performed on each of the two partitions of the student's dataset that is admitted and non-admitted in the present example. This task concludes our demonstration of the part 4b of using Python with Third Data Vantage TechBytes series. We exit the session by now executing the Teradata ML remove context function. We would like to thank you for watching the part 4B presentation and demo. We wish you a wonderful rest of your day.